What you got there, Si? I'm headed down to the Klim Peninsula with the aim of shooting some big pollock off some of the more remote headlands. The viz looked fantastic in the shallows, but it was pretty rough and choppy, as you can see here. I decided to target the furthest point of this headland, and you can see some large drop-offs there. I was hoping the pollock would be coming in from the deeper water and congregating around these deep drop-offs. Now, it was quite a long walk to get to the mark. It took me about an hour to get in, and I actually had to basically climb down the cliff, and it was uh, quite difficult carrying my carbon fins, gun and float. Didn't want to damage anything, but managed to kit up. Getting the fins on was uh, particularly awkward on this rock ledge with um, quite a, a fair swell, actually. And it wasn't the, uh, the easiest thing to do. Definitely don't want to break these 300 quid carbon fins. It would not be a, a good day if you did that. Now, the water close in was pretty choppy. There was a big swell coming in. But as I started to get out, it was obvious that this was going to be really, really good. And I knew straight away it was going to be a good session. Now this weekend I was going to be camping, so I knew I had to be pretty selective about which fish I was going to shoot. You can see this pollock cruising past here, that's about 45 centimetres. A bass here, this is definitely undersized, you know, it's a pretty small bass, that's only about 35 centimetres, so well underneath the minimum size. And I tried diving at a few different depths. You can see here that same bass again, just cruising past. This is actually on a separate dive. I'm certain it's the same fish, it's in exactly the same place, um, one dive after another. And I tried a few stalks as well. I normally spearfish a sort of more static ambush method, but this stalking method can be quite effective for bass. And you can see as I creep through the kelp here, a bass just comes head on straight at me. If you're stealthy enough, it often comes straight towards you. See here it turns and I miss. Now it's quite difficult to shoot on the move. And I tried going to a few different spots again. Here's another pollock. This is a shootable size, about 40 centimetres. But again, I'm just looking for something a bit bigger. I do want a standout fish. I'm going to shoot a pollock. I want it to be a big one. Got a bit, bit deeper in this dive. This is at about 12 metres. You can see the pollock here just sort of calmly milling around. But again, nothing that's really quite worth shooting. You know, most of these pollock are just about a shootable size. But again, if I'm going to shoot one, it's going to be a big one. Now, I'm going to take you through a full dive here and just explain a little bit about the tactics I use. This is a dive of about six and a half meters. Nice area kelp. Now, I get down and I dive in a slight parabola shape. And see how I just move along the bottom here. And that's so my fins just tuck down. If you look to my right and behind me, you can see this kelp there. So I'm pretty much hidden to any fish approaching from the right hand side. <laughs> Pollock comes in, again that's a shootable size, but it's just not worth taking. I want something much bigger. Now I'm just waiting and waiting and waiting. I know the bass are going to be moving at pace through this sort of mark. And if you stand the water for long enough, there's a pretty good chance that the shoulder bass will come past. I'm just grunting a bit <laughs> to bring them in. Staying really still, nice and slow movements, and sure enough, a shoulder bass come through. Now, it's pretty difficult to track sometimes, and just before I shoot, I spook them a bit. And this is a good example of why you need a good breath hold. So, I've been underwater uh, for close to one and a half minutes here, and you need enough left in the tank or in your lungs to go and chase a fish like this. I put in a bad shot here, right through the tail, and I was actually quite lucky to get this fish. But it just shows why you do need to hold your breath for a decent amount of time. I was able to retrieve this fish and prevent it from tearing off. And it's a pretty nice fish, about 50 centimetres, decent bass. There'll be plenty of meat on that. And because I was camping, I was only going to shoot one fish. There's no point taking more than you can definitely eat. So it's just time to get out and admire some of the scenery. It was a really remote and wild place. There's actually a real privilege to be out there. It's uh, obviously going to be quite a long walk back though, not something that I was particularly looking forward to. Now I found a much better way to get out of the water than I found to get in. I found a nice kind of series of ledges above the cliff, although it's pretty steep. And you'll see here there's a lot of bracken to walk through. This can be quite infested with ticks. 
and uh, fortunately I didn't get any but I had some pretty nasty rashes on my feet after walking through here barefooted in flip flops and a really really dramatic place you know it's not the easiest place to get to but it's well worth putting the effort to get to these sort of marks I love the adventure of spearfishing in places like this just look at how good this scenery is it's so good being down on the Klim Peninsula, so remote. Now one thing I always do is fillet and prep the fish on the beach. It means you can throw the carcasses back in the sea and then you know crabs and other life can get them, you might as well. And uh, it was time to meet the other guys and the steep walk back uh, out of the out of the sea. Not everyone enjoyed that. What you got there, Si? A little bit of moss. Si cider mullet. Very nice. <laughs> <laughs> now after we all met back up, it was time to cook fish. I'm using a mixture of salt, pepper, paprika, chili powder, and parsley. Really good way to cook fish. Oh, it looks nice, that. It's nice having a proper flame on it. Now, interestingly, the other guys really enjoyed this method. This is my standard method if I'm out camping. Really nice and easy way to prepare your fish. Now they said it made the fish taste a bit like chicken, which is quite interesting. Uh, Simon has shot quite a big mullet actually. We cooked it in the same way and it really you know, it really added a new dimension to eating mullet. It's not always the, uh, the best fish, but a bit of paprika really, really sorts it out. It's a fantastic way to cook it. James, one of the other guys on the trip, he's uh, worked in a lot of qu quite good restaurants, he's a trained chef, and we let him do the honours of cooking, he uses quite a lot of oil here, see how much he's got in, and this seems to cook the fish much more evenly, so that's a good tip. How was that bass, James? Perfectly cooked. <laughs> Hopefully you enjoyed that video. If you did, please do like and subscribe. Again, it helps my channel grow. Now, towards the end of this month, I'll be heading up the Isle of Skye, and hopefully I'll get some big pollock on that trip, be able to make an interesting video about it. Otherwise, until then, enjoy your diving.